Catholicism was really important to my family. Uh, they would go to church on Christmas and Easter, and every once in a while they'd get the bug to try to go to Mass a little more frequently, but my sister and I were usually able to talk them out of it. Faith wasn't a big part of our family life. If we went to church, we got to play matchbox cars on the kneelers, and if we were too loud, we got a spanking. You know, I could act really sick. I could do, you know, a great, oh, I'm so, my tummy hurts. And I think that my parents just kind of gave up at a young age. Junior high was pretty rough, and it, I think everyone struggles was kind of trying to fit in. How do I belong? I started getting involved with friends that my mom and dad didn't really approve of their behaviors. I met a group of kids who went to an evangelical Protestant church. Fantastic group of people. It was through knowing them that I really realized that there were people in the world my own age who really loved God. When I was 15 years old and getting more into my faith, I wanted to start going to church regularly, but I realized it was going to be up to me, so I would set my alarm on Sunday morning and go downstairs and wake my mom up, and together she and I would go. You know, all the rules and stuff like that it just seemed to be a, do this, do this, do this. In fact, more accurately is don't do this, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. The more I got into Catholicism, the more I realized that those rules weren't, you know, laid down so that we could do those things for God, that God benefited. God did those for us because we'll be happier when we follow them, that those are for, those are for our benefit. The portions of my life that I were, was living not in line with the church's teaching, not in line with God's law, were the parts of my life that were dragging me down. You cannot break the law, you can only break yourself against the law. Have you ever thought about becoming a priest? And then boom, all of a sudden my eyes open like, that's a possibility. So you're a 14 year old boy in America on the football team, you know, surrounded by all the fun stuff that's going on and all of a sudden a life of prayer and celibacy and service to the church is attractive. Yeah, I felt excited about it. I felt like, you know, I was on fire for that idea that yes, that's what I you know, want to look to. That's what I want to drive to. That's not natural. That doesn't just happen. That's something else working. When my mom found out, um, she suggested, she, her first question was, are you gay? Um, is this why you, know, you want to do that? And you know, thanks mom, no. When I was in college, two worldviews kind of came to a collision competing for the attention and affection of my life. On the one hand, I had my growing faith, and on the other hand, I had a dating relationship that was heading in the wrong direction. It was a really difficult moment in my life because I realized that in order to really keep moving forward with the parts of my life that were making me happiest, I was going to have to end this dating relationship. God came to me and met me where I was, and the church helped me along the way to coming and growing and getting to know God better. I realized that if I was going to be married to someone for the rest of my earthly life, it was going to have to be somebody who shared my faith. So I went uh, to the seminary, discovered the priesthood wasn't for me, thought I should pursue marriage, and then I met this beautiful young woman. So I had been friends with this guy now for about a year, and I started to realize that there was a little bit more there than friendship. There was a few times when I thought, I almost thought he was going to say something. I kind of wanted to you know, pursue our friendship, you know, more than just friendship, but I wasn't sure how that would go, um, you know, because once you kind of take that step, what would that do to our friendship? And he would pull out something stupid like, I have something really important to tell you. And so I wanted to kind of gauge what the response would be, so I would try to frame it like, Angie, there's something really important we have to, I have to tell you. I could see that, you know, she had anticipations, like, this is a good sign, like, Yes, you know, she's expecting something. Maybe this is something that she wants too. I'd say, <gasps> and he'd say, I'm really not six foot tall. I'm really only five, 11 and a half. Being rejected is tough. <laughs> so I was, I was trying to, you know, um, I was trying to feel, test the waters before I did anything yeah. stupid. And I would just be crushed. So after several trial runs, I thought that it was ready. I thought that I had everything set. This is it, I was gonna ask her. And the result of it was... There are a lot
lot of different visions of what marriage is about, but for us as Catholics, we knew that a big part of that was being open to life. And so before you knew it, You know that staples button? Sometimes you wish you could just do this. My favorite comment is, oh wow, you have your hands full. And I think, well, of course, doesn't everyone have their hands full? It just depends on what you're filling your hands with, right? And I've chosen to fill my hands with my children. <laughs> Sure, they take hands and arms and it's hard to wrap everything around all of that um, but it's it's joyful and it's it's God's plan for family <laughs> I love being with them. I love when there's a break from school and they get to be home with me. I'd rather have them home with me than school. Most moms dread summer vacation and they love it when school starts up again and I'm just the opposite. God's design for us as individuals and who we are to become the best people that we can be. Our children are a part of that. We learn from them every day and it's through our service to them that we become more of an image of Christ. He dies on the cross with death because he saves from us and that's all I can help. You know, having family prayer is obviously not easy to do because we want to teach all the kids to pray with where they're at in life. Sometimes you just have to do what you have to do and leave the rest to God. And so I think the more important thing you do is, as a parent, you just kind of muddle through it. You know, we have the family together, we have to deal with, you know, screaming and frustration. The baby did not nap this afternoon, so she's been very crabby. Uh, we have to, you know, deal with, you know, kids poking each other. <coughs> That's enough combing the baby's hair with my fork. Veronica is um, in, a, in she's six, and so she's trying to you know um, absorb and understand all the faith concepts. And we tried to under, you know explain to her the Trinity, and then she was just getting so frustrated. Dad, I just don't get it. It's three persons but one God. They're not separate, but they're different people. I don't understand. I'm like Veronica. You're six. Nobody understands. It's a mystery. So you're okay. Deal with it. Jesus modeled servant leadership for us. He washed his disciples' feet. And I think that the family is a great place for us as parents to learn servant leadership. We are the leaders of our family, but in doing that, we are the servants of everyone else building up our family. For us as Catholics, our faith isn't just between us and God. Our faith is also an aspect of community in our lives. Let your mercy be on us, O oh God, as we place our trust in you. It's hard sometimes. We're scrambling out the door, sometimes we're running late, sometimes someone's wearing the wrong shoes or the baby's fussy, it's supposed to be her nap time, but, um, but we're at Mass anyway because we are a community and this is what we do, this is what we're called to do, and this is what feeds, feeds us. I want to connect to the one who so loves me. We get to receive Jesus Christ himself physically and he becomes a part of us and then in that we become more like him. If I want my child to be a saint, the obvious first thing that we do is to baptize our kids, to enter them into the life of grace. Because if we don't baptize our kids, we're really cheating them of the grace of God growing in their hearts. God has given us this great gift of the Catholic Church, His Church, 
to be our guide, to be our source of hope, um, kind of a, a, sound, a grounding point in this world. Perhaps if you have driven by our church building, you wonder what goes on here. And the answer to that is really there is a family that gathers here, a community of people who have one thing in common, and that's our faith in Jesus Christ. If you would like to be a part of that experience, we have a place here for you. You are always welcome to come and to meet our family, but also to share, most importantly with us, the experience of Jesus in our lives. We love St. George Parish. The first time we went to St. George, it felt like coming home. And since we've been there, we have met so many wonderful families, individuals, priests. We'd like to encourage you to you know, ask all the questions you need, seek them out, and be you know, open to the answers. Know that God loves you. Come join us.